And so part seven of revision using the 1997 higher paper, this time questions four to six. So starting with number four then, pause and try it. Question four. It's a graph and you have to find it looks like the total shaded area, although I've not shaded it in here. But first of all, it's given you it in its factorised form and it says what's the coordinates of P and Q and it says there's negative two. Well that's come from that one. So you could just state it straight away from those two. Maybe I'll just write down a wee bit more. As far as P and Q are concerned, you're looking for points where Y is zero. And if Y is zero, then that means that either X equals negative two, one or two, which means P will be the first positive one so that'll be 1, 0, and Q will be the next one, which is 2, 0. Right, so that's the first part. Now the second bit. Find the total shaded area. Well, I'm not going to integrate in one go. I'm just going to replace these now. That's now 1, and that's now 2. I'm not going to go from 0 to 2 in one go, because then all the positive elements will start to get cancelled out by these negative ones and I won't end up with a total area. And I'll have to do them separately. So I'll work at area 1, I'll work at area 2. Area 1 will be a positive amount, area 2 will be a negative amount, but for the total area I'll ignore the negativeness of area 2 and just take its positive value. Right, well, so I'm going to have to integrate it, but before I can integrate it I'll need some separate terms. So, I'll just speed through that. Right. Put this down again, so put down the three brackets. So leave the first one alone and multiply these two. So it'll be x squared minus 3x plus 2. Then x times each of them will put the power up one. And then doubling each of them, so it'll be 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. Add that up, it'll be on x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. Right, area 1. So area 1 is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of this thing x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4 dx and area 2 is going to integral from 1 to 2 of that same thing x cubed minus 4x plus 4 whoops, dx so integrating it that means everything's going to go up 1 quarter x to the 4 1 third x to the 3 2 x squared plus 4x from 0 to 1. Same for this. 1 quarter x to the 4 minus 1 third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x from 1 to 2. That's that? 1, 1. And then substitute in the figures. Right, so x is going to be 1 for all these, so it's a quarter of 1, a third of 1, 2 times 1, and 4 times 1. And it's all just come to zero. And this time it's twos that go in. So each of the x's is replaced by a two this time. Oops, two there. So, and then finish with two. Now that one is going to be that answer. So I can wait. So where's this come to? That's easy. One to the end of things one. So it's a quarter minus a third. And there's two plus four. Put them all over 12. So that'll be three minus four plus two. And that's 24. So that comes to 23 upon 12. Right, unit square. And that can go over there. Because that's what the one came to, 23 upon 12. No, it's that. 16 divided by 4, that's 4, that's 8 upon 3, and then that's, no it's not, that's 8 plus 8, and that minus that 23 upon 12. Again, all over 12, that's going to be 48, 32, there you go, so minus the 23, and that comes to minus, minus, come on, minus 11 upon 12. So, A1 is 23 twelfths, and A2 is negative 7 twelfths. Now there's no more room here. So, shaded area equals... 23 upon 12, now that's negative, but I'm going to say plus 7 upon 12, that's 30 upon 12. Cancelling that down, that's going to be 6 into them both, that's going to be 5 upon 2 units squared. Or 2 and a half. Right, let's try question 5. Question five. So, the diagram shows <coughs> a sketch of part of the graph of this function, written in completed squared form, handy for the turning point, not so handy for where it cuts the y-axis, 
and that's what it wants. Where does it cut the y-axis? Right, so, right on the corners of A. Well, on the y-axis, so I'll make a statement. On the y-axis, I know that x is 0. So if I want to find the y-coordinate, I'll just substitute that in. So I've got 0, take away 2 squared plus 1. That's going to be negative 2 squared, 4 plus 1, 5. Which means A is going to be the point 0, 5. B, B is easier being the turning point, because I'll get that straight from this. The minimum value will be 1 when the square comes to 0, that happens at 2. So B is the point 2, 1. So I can just state that straight away. B is the point 2, 1. Of course, another way of getting that would just be by considering that this completed squared form is just a movement of the basic graph of y equals x squared shifted forward 2 and up 1. Shift it forward 2, x minus 2 squared, shift it up 1, plus 1. So you can read that straight away just by the amounts moved along and up. So, part B. Part B says this next diagram shows the graph of y of fx as before and the y graph of <coughs> g of x which seems to come up and go down like this. It's given its equation as g of x equals 5 plus 4x minus x squared and find the area enclosed between them. So that means I'll have to integrate it from where they first cross to where they cross again of the upper take away the lower to get these little vertical segments in between the two. Right, so first of all I have to find where they cross. So that means substituting the two equations. So, at the points of intersection, the two expressions should be equal. So, f of x, which is this expression, should equal g of x, which is this expression. Multiply that bracket, I'll have to leave that and let that wait just now. Bring it all over to one side, so about 2x squared, minus 8x, numbers go, because they come to 0. Take out the common factor, and that leaves x minus 4 as the other one, so x either equals 0 or 4. Which means a is at 0, and b is at 4. So now, area. The area is going to equal the integral from 0 to 4 of the top, take away the bottom. Of the top, which is g, take away the bottom. That will be the other way around. So that will be of 8x minus 2x squared dx. <coughs> because in taking these equations, I took this one, which was the bottom, and subtracted this one, which is the top. So that's the other way round. So that will be the opposite of that. So that will equal for the next part. I'll just speed through that. So it's up to 2 divided by 2 and up to 3 divided by 3, going from 0 to 4. So substituting in 4 first of all for the x's, and then something you 0 is just going to give you 0 anyway. So it's 4 16 of 64, and that'll be 2 thirds also of 64. So that leaves you 1 third of 64 units squared. So, part C says, g of x can be written as m plus n lots of f of x. Well, it's certainly a multiple of it, it's a negative of it. Apart from the number at the end. So it's going to be the negative of it plus some number. That's what it's got, n for that number, is that right? No, it wants m for that number. Right, well, that means I can find that by taking that over the other side. So it'll be 5 plus 4x minus x squared. When I take that over, it'll just be plus this plus x squared minus 4x plus 5, and that's what m will be. Well, they all cancel out, leaving you with 10, which means that m equals 10. So it says, show it can be written in that form. Well, it will. g of x will be 10 minus f of x, which means that you've got it in the form of m plus n times f of x, just to be formal, where m equals 10 and n is just negative 1. And that's question 5. Right, and finally, try question 6. So number 6 now. Right, there's a sketch of the graph here. y equals 1 over x, typical reciprocal graph. Asymptote across and down and along. A the tangent at the point A, random x coordinate A, putting that in means the y coordinate is 1 over A. Find the gradient of that tangent. Well, <coughs> gradient of the tangent, 
derivative. <coughs> so look at this. Y equals 1 over X. Put it into index form to differentiate. So it'll be negative 1 multiplying it, 1 off the power negative 2. <coughs> so that means negative 1 upon X squared. Then at the point T, what's the gradient? Well, the gradient will be equal to the derivative at that point, which will be negative 1 over a squared. Second part says b. That was part a. Part b says, so what's the equation of this tangent? Well, we'll be using y minus b equals mx minus a. <coughs> There's an unfortunate thing because I'm using a to stand for that x-coordinate and a <coughs> is that part there. So, put it in. I've got y minus the y-coordinate, y minus 1 over a is the gradient, negative 1 upon <coughs> a squared times x minus the x-coordinate, which just happens to be the same thing, a there. Right, get rid of the fractions, cross multiply there. A squared y minus a equals negative x minus a. Multiply it out first. A squared y minus a is negative x plus a. But it was in a particular form, x and y on one side, a and the other. So bringing the x over positive, x plus a squared y equals, bring that a over to join that a, 2a. So that's part b. Part c. The tangent cuts the y-axis at b and the x-axis at c. I'm going to put the equation there. Calculate the area of this triangle. Well, it's half base times a. I'll need that length and that length. Where does it go the x-axis? Where does it go the y-axis? Do the y-axis first. If you're on the y-axis, you know one of the coordinates. You know x is 0. So put x is 0 into that equation. So that means that you've got a squared y equals 2a which means y is going to be 2a over a squared, so y is 2 over a. What's c? If you're on the x-axis, that means your y-coordinate is 0. Put that into this equation. So you've got x plus 0 equals 2a. So that to get the area of triangle O, B, C, which will be a half base times height. It'll be a half of, <coughs> the base of it is 2A, and the height of it is 2 over A. The A's cancel, one of those 2's cancel, they're left with 2 square units. So the area of triangle OBC is 2 square units. Part 2 now says this. For part 2, <coughs> comment on that answer. Well, the first thing you notice about that answer is, <coughs> there's no mention of A. A could have been any point. <coughs> so what that says is, irrespective of that point of contact, the area of that triangle stays the same. Which means the area of triangle OBC is going to be independent of the variable small a, not capital A, as I've written here. Which means that no matter how you slide that along, however you slide that a straight line so it's a tangent to the curve, the area of that tangent makes the x-axis is always the same. Which means the area of triangle OBC is going to be the same for all positions of A. Well, but either of those two statements would do.